Hello and welcome to Connecticut Backcountry. I'm Gary and I made a wood stove. Um, I've always wanted to always wanted to try to get into hot tenting and uh, I bought a Polish Lavu, the uh, Polatka, I guess I think is how it said it's uh, half shelters. So I bought a Polish Lavu and I um, my intention's always been to build a stove for it or buy a, buy a stove for it. Uh, the stoves are expensive. They're like three, four hundred bucks for a titanium one. Hundred bucks for a cheap, cheap, cheap fall apart from Amazon one. Uh, so I decided to try, and it's too big. It's too big for the uh, for the lavu. So I decided to try to build one. And there's this guy Simon, a bloke in the woods. He has a lot of videos on uh, making modifications to your lavu, and one of them is building a stove for it. He used an ammo can like this and made something similar to this. Now this one, it, there was a bit of welding. You can do everything, and I'll link the video down below. You can do everything with no welding in his version. Uh, but I have, happen to have a welder, so it was a little bit easier for me. So the, the parts that I used were three quarter by an inch, uh, uh, three quarter by quarter inch uh, steel stock for the legs. I had some plate seal floating around and that's what I made the door, the lock and the latch out of. A couple of just regular hinges, uh, three inch hinges that I got at the hardware store. These are uh, auto parts exhaust extensions. My damper is made out of a bolt welded into a T and uh, run through the pipe. The box is an ammo can. Uh, fit, uh, they call it a Fat 50 or 50 caliber ammo can. That's slightly different dimensions than this. It's just a little bit taller, but everything else is about the same. Uh, I used a little bit of expanded metal and some stove gasket around the top. It's all in the video. I'm making an ammo can wood stove. What do I got to do? I got to. Put a door, put a hinge, put some legs, drill a hole for the stove pipe, cut off the handle. Pull out the gasket, add fireproof gasket to it, and put something in the bottom to keep the heat, I uh, keep the wood off the bottom, to keep the fire off the bottom of the, the uh, ammo can. So, what do I have? I have a, an ammo can. This says eight fuse proximity M728. I have no idea what that means. Um, it's something close to the equivalent of a 50 cal ammo can, but it's not like the fat 50 or the little short 50. It's a little short 50. That was taller by about that much. Um, I have a couple pieces of, what is that? It's like three quarter inch by three sixteenths or so. Rod, um, I have some gasket material and some gasket cement. I have a few of these, which are just tailpipe extensions. This one's 18 inch by two inches around. Steel hinge. And expanded metal. That's going to be the bottom. I'm putting the expanded metal on the bottom. All right, over to there so I can make some cuts and knock that handle off. See that? We're just going to take the flap disc and knock that down to flat. Don't forget this stuff. Maybe a couple of these.
You so need to mark an approximate center for this. Stay off about that far. And actually, we're not far off. I only really need approximate center. They're not cut. Oh, goodness. I might not have been recording. Alright, so we are going to. Work out three inches of this pipe all the way around. And then we're going to go into the bandsaw. Get a quick cut on the bandsaw. the stove cement around the outside. down a little further. Thank you. 
tuned. That's a tight fit, my friend. So that's my door. Okay, cut down that side. Can you see the lines? Oh, you can see all of the lines, even the ones I'm not going to use. So that line, that line there, and that line. Well, that line, that line, that line are going to be my cuts across the bottom here. Six inches by four and a half inches. And so let it be written, so let it be done. I'm going to grab the angle grinder. So I didn't realize the battery ran out and I got a pretty sturdy door that covers the hole by the top and the bottom. It covers the hole by a bit. Uh, now I'm going to latches hinges. I'm just going to use regular hinges, three inch hinges with two of them. I'm going to put them in place. I'm going to weld them in place and then the whole thing can close tight. thinking about a bar that comes off there or maybe even in the middle maybe in the middle that that latches down into the support there so I need something approximately I don't know a couple inches that way so if I come off by an inch if I come off by a half an inch even If I come off by a half an inch, so I need something about two and a half inches long and about of an inch. I'm not going to use this, I'm just going to use it as a template. And we're going to cut more steel out of this. I'm going to take these out to the uh, to the belt sander and I'm going to clean them up real quick. Be right back. So that's going to be like that. I'm just going to latch into it like that. Easy peasy. Parts. How I want to vent the stove. Like get air in. Do I want a draft across the bottom or do I want I think cut a whole round thing out of this, making something that spins in place might be beneficial.
sander on the belt sander real quick. Be right back. All right, back from the belt sander and boom, got a circle. I feel as though that is close enough. Just make a cut here so I can roll it out that way. Roll it out that way. So when I go like that, go like that, there's something to hold on to when I twist it. Work them up. Need to buy a pair of needles in those pliers. <laughs> I don't have a pair. I got a couple pair, but they're not in good condition. Pliers I found many years ago. So this one actually twisted out the way it was supposed to. This one did not, but I'm not gonna cry. It's still pretty decent and it'll do what I want it to. As far as give me a place to twist. So what do I have left? I have to put a latch on. All right, so there's the door, All right? My intention is to have a piece here and have a piece here that latches onto itself. All right, put that backwards there and there. All right, so drill a hole in this, drill a hole in the door, run a popper of it and weld this in place. Pretty straightforward. 
that's the last I have to do for the door, other than pop rivet it in place. Open up on the bottom side. So when it clips, when it clips in, that falls clear until it's in place. So like right inside, I'm just going to use some of this expanded metal and I'm going to fold it so it stands off the bottom and cut it so it's the perfect width for the bottom. See the inside. Need legs, definitely need legs. What a legs. I want the fronts to be back uh, higher than the backs. I want them both to fold up into place. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna take these both into the belt sander. I'm gonna clamp them together and I'm gonna round off the edges so they're nice and even. We're going to cut another piece for a cross brace at six inches. On the whole thing. This stuff falls one. Oh, stick a little bit. That's not bad. There you go. The back set's going to be like this. About the same angle. All right. So I've been sick a few days and haven't been out of the house or anything like that. Um, nothing bad. Just a head cold. It's all good now. Nose is still running, but eh, whatever. Um, I, when I bought everything to do this, I bought the wrong size rivets and well, I didn't, they were mislabeled, I guess, because they don't fill the quarter inch hole that they said they would, but I have bolts and I have bolt accessories, nuts, <laughs> and I'm drilling out the legs and I'm going to put in bigger bolts. I actually even have a screw and nut for that thing whatever that's called air flow valve thingy and for the lock so we're pretty all set so i'm going to drill the holes like the legs mounted up just right and everything works this is just a drill i think i just i had just broke the drill bit it fits perfect and it keeps at a nice angle front and back are angled all right now i gotta wire wheel everything and paint it up
there's the latch. Lift, open, down to close. And there's the air valve. That, my friends, is the wood stuff. All right, so need to make a damper for the stack. I'm going to try using this, which is just a piece of the compressor body that I used to make my forge. Just had it laying around, a little bit of spare steel. So I'm going to drill a hole with the hole saw through this, and I'm going to slide this bolt through the pipe tack weld that in place um yeah we'll see if that works fingers crossed <laughs> oh i'll use the spring to add tension to it so when i put it into position and i'm going to tack a little t-handle onto the end of the bolt so nothing to it but they do it right Get a hole. So how do I know where to hold, throw the hole in here? I'm going to spin some tape around here, about even with the top. I'm going to go all the way around. And make a nice even cut so I can measure and my initial cut is going to be my initial drill hole is going to be on the line so I'm going to measure in half the distance and that will give me a straight line across the pipe. Let's just make sure that we got it. So that right there is our drill hole. Like that. And Slotted the pipe so it'll fit over the damper just like that. All right, so not in the yard. I'm just going to do a first burn just to burn off any of the chemicals that are going to burn off so it doesn't happen inside the tent. Um, uh, just to run you over with everything that's that I did. That's the that's the airflow uh, control opens up pretty wide closes down pretty well it is not sealed in any way shape or form there is a small leak I did put a washer behind that so it won't seal all the way and it opens up pretty wide I 
added a lock down here because it holds the door nice and tight. I left room underneath here in case I want to eventually bent the bottom. I didn't, I've seen some do it and I wasn't sure if I wanted to or not. Uh, the pipes are all cut down to uh, 10, and th uh, 10 and 3 quarter inches and they fit snugly inside the inside the stove which makes me feel that the stove will take comfortably 10 and a half inch logs um, the legs fold up snugly so they'll stay closed and they open up nice and nice for transport and they both sit at an angle so it won't fall over easily uh, the stove itself it sits at a slight angle backwards so nothing rolls easily out the front the damper is a bolt that i welded another piece of steel to this is actually just piece of a sign that I had laying around uh, the damper itself is a piece of a, uh, a drilled out piece of my forge actually <laughs> the metal that I used to make my forge which was an old compressor or compressor a spring from a carburetor stretched out a couple of washers uh, everything opens up it is gasketed so it won't leak inside the tent theoretically the pipe itself the pipe is exhaust sections two on uh, two inch exhaust sections i welded in the top piece so everything just rests down on top of it and i slotted the very top piece so it sits over top of the damper just like that all right, so first burn says I definitely need holes in the bottom because <laughs> as soon as I close it, it starts to puff out. So I need venting under here to uh, let more air flow in. The function of the function of the stove is your main air control. Those are your venting, so. Of, uh, allow a draft. This is the lock on the door. Uh, legs fold up underneath, they collapse, and this is your damper. As you can see, it works pretty well. <laughs> so this was a great project. It took me a couple hours after work each day, probably 10 hours total. Uh, I took a few days off because I wasn't feeling too well, but after other than that, about 10 to 10 to 10 ish hours. Um, I took my time with it. I'm really happy with how it came out. And if you decide to make one, let me know. I'd like to see it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and you will see more content coming up using the stove on a camp out in my, in my lava. find some nice split dry wood out there too. <laughs>